Okay, I am very nervous to film this video. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Yes, I look deathly pale, and I also have a sore throat, so I'm not the picture of health right now, but I wanted to film a video that has been requested basically since I moved to Copenhagen, and I have just been putting off and off and off because obviously it's a bit of a sensitive topic, and I am I'm a little bit nervous to talk about it. But today I thought I would talk you through on average what I spend in a week living in Copenhagen. I'm gonna do this video a little bit differently to how most videos that I've personally watched like this are filmed. Instead of taking you through every little expense and saying on Monday I bought this, on Tuesday I bought this, I'm just gonna talk about the main expenses that I have on a weekly basis and the main expenses that I think anyone else living in Copenhagen or looking to live here might incur. Just to set the context for this video, the currency here in Denmark is the Danish krona, but so I understand it and also because it's closer to the euro and dollar, I will be converting everything in this video to British pounds. So there's varying answers when you Google this but Copenhagen is currently ranked as either the most expensive city in the EU or definitely one of the highest and it's also the eighth most expensive city in the world. Just to put that into perspective as a comparison to Leeds which is where I live in the UK and go to university lots of things are almost double the price. I know that I shouldn't have to explain myself but inevitably you are probably wondering how on earth do I afford to live here as a student. So I just wanted to explain that I am completely self-sufficient. I don't get any money from my parents. I don't get a student loan at the moment apart from an Erasmus grant that I got right at the start of the year. I'm in a very, very fortunate position where I do earn an income from the content that I produce on social media. And I've also been heavily relying on my savings this year, which I've also accumulated from that work. So even though I am obviously a student at the moment, I am by no means saying that this is what the average student spends or what you should expect to spend if you move here. I am very lucky that I can afford a lot of these things that I will talk you through because of the money that I earn from my job. Anyway, let's get into some numbers. So I'm going to start with direct debits and subscriptions that I have here. I applied to student accommodation through Copenhagen Business School and it was completely random where I ended up. So I didn't even choose this building and within this building I didn't choose this room but I did end up with one of the larger rooms in my student accommodation so that is why my rent is quite high. However included in that rent is also the bills, so the water, electricity, Wi-Fi, and a few other services. Like we get new linens and towels and stuff every two weeks. I pay this in two installments every semester. That's just the way they do it. But for the sake of this video, I worked out what that would be on a weekly basis. And for rent and bills and services, I pay 215 pounds a week. So that is a very high figure and it's around double what I'm used to paying back in Leeds. However, as I mentioned, my room here is one of the bigger rooms in the building, so that is why that figure is quite high. You could definitely get it lower if you had a different size room, or maybe you were staying in private housing. Student accommodation is not necessarily always the cheapest option. Even though I have pretty much everything I need in this room, I still have to pay for laundry in this 
this building and that averages out about three to five pounds I'd say depending on how many washing machines I use depending on if I use the dryer okay so now we have the big figure out of the way I'm gonna go into a few other of the subscriptions and the direct debits that I have here so I have a gym membership here in Denmark and that's 150 kroners a month which works out at four pounds 21 a week which I actually think is pretty good that was cheaper than the gym that I was paying for back in Leeds I then have a contact lens direct debit here and that works out at £5.56 a week once again that's pretty similar to what I was paying back in the UK my phone bill is actually way cheaper here I have a pay-as-you-go phone and I currently have a Danish sim in it and that costs me £2.22 pence a week I then also have a bike rental subscription with swap yet and that averages out at £4.42 pence a week. So now into some more interesting numbers and these are also the numbers that vary more on a weekly basis. So firstly a food shop, pretty important one, and my food shop averages out around £60 a week. So this is definitely an area where I spend more than is necessary. £60 is a lot to be spending on a food shop per week. I am well aware of that. However, the reason that that number is high is because I personally like to buy lots of organic, raw, whole foods, lots of fresh foods. I also definitely don't shop at the most cost-effective supermarket. I do get a few bits from Lidl. However, I do do most of my food shop at Fotex, which is definitely a more expensive supermarket here in Denmark, but I personally prefer the quality of the food. I can often find the organic options. Also another reason that that number is higher here in Denmark is because I don't eat out nearly as much as I eat out back in the UK and that is because once again it's really expensive to eat out here. Even though as I said I don't do it often at all, definitely not on a weekly basis. I'd say like a couple times a month max. I thought I'd still give you some numbers. So in my last week weekly vlog I went to a Chinese restaurant with my friends and that meal cost me £13.87 and personally I don't think that's that bad I feel like I'd kind of expect to pay that in the UK also a slightly more expensive one though was I went out for lunch and I had a salad and a juice and that cost me £17.93 if you're looking for a cheaper alternative when you're out and about then I love these hot dog stands around Copenhagen and the vegan tofu one that I get is £4.20. So once again a reason that things are costing potentially slightly more for me is because I am choosing to have those veggie alternatives. So as you'll know if you watch my vlogs a big part of my weekly routine is going out and going to coffee shops whether it's to socialise with a friend or whether it's to get some work done and Copenhagen is so expensive for coffee so on average a latte or a cappuccino which is what I normally get is around five pounds I think these are some of the most expensive prices in Europe if not the most expensive price for a cappuccino so yeah when I am going a few times a week to a coffee shop this figure definitely adds up also a very popular thing here are Danish pastries and I got one from a bakery that was on my street the other week and that cost me two pound 37. I personally don't go on nights out that often but I have been on a few since I moved back this semester so I thought I'd just give you the rough prices of things. I didn't pay any club entry last week when I went out but I did pay 19 pounds 16 pence on a round of four drinks. I mean 19 pounds divided by four isn't too bad for a drink in a club but I also got Burger King 
thing afterwards and a plant-based meal which was a burger, chips and a drink cost me £8.68. So even though I have a gym membership I do also like to do swimming and yoga so these are extra expenses for me. Depending on how many classes I am doing a week yoga will typically cost me between £10 and £20 a week and every time I go swimming it is £4 so once again depending on how many times I go a week it'll probably be either four or eight pounds I don't really go more than twice as I also mentioned I pay a monthly subscription to swap Fiets for my bike however when the weather is bad or I'm out somewhere without my bike I obviously have to pay for other transport costs and one of the main forms of transport in Copenhagen is the metro it's so good I love it so one metro ride will normally cost me between two pounds and four pounds depending on where I'm going, how many zones I'm going through. Or I sometimes get a donkey bike if I want to cycle but I don't have my bike and that costs on average about two pounds for like a 20 minute cycle. Finally a kind of miscellaneous cost but one that I thought was quite relevant for students is I bought a textbook a few weeks ago for one of my modules and that cost me 22 pounds 81 pence. So these costs will inevitably fluctuate on a weekly basis but I calculated a very rough average figure for what I spend per week and this came to 367 pounds. So I was just as shocked as you are when I worked this figure out, but I would just like to say, obviously a big part of that is my rent. My rent is 215. So if you take that off the figure, I'm spending 152 on my other subscriptions and my food shop and other expenses. I feel very exposed telling you this figure, but without repeating myself, I would just like to emphasize that I am well aware that that is a high figure and it's not just that Copenhagen is an expensive city. I am well aware that I am making personal choices. They all add up to quite a high figure and I'm in a very, very fortunate position where I'm able to finance that. Having said that, even though this is a very expensive city to live in, if you are looking to move here and you are on a student budget there are definitely swaps that you can make and ways that you can make it cheaper living here so I really don't want this video to scare you off in any way I honestly feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders now because I was so nervous as I said before filming this but I really hope that it's been informative if it was then make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel for lots of other Copenhagen content and and also follow my social media because I post on there every single day. Bye!